Okay. Good morning, class. Uh, as I was just uh, uh, trying to tell you, like uh, with regards to yesterday, we had a meeting, departmental meeting, with uh, where we were uh, analyzing the performance your results as of now. Uh, the and the CRs were also there in that meeting, and so like we like we, we found is doing really well. Uh, unlike the other years where we found really struggles at times, but this time we found it's doing really well. And I, when I was looking into your performance also, section B is doing better compared to the other two sections in all the subjects. So that's a really good thing. Keep it up. And uh, I expect a similar sort of results also from you in your final exams. Now, with regards to your final exams, there have been students have been asking whether final exams will happen or not. And we will have final exams, and we do not, but we do not know the date yet. The moment we get to know, we let you know, but you all will have to actually start getting prepared for your final exams now, okay? And by 24th of this month, we will finish the syllabus. So what I'll do today is I'll finish unit seven, the last part of unit seven, and the last two weeks that we have, we will do unit eight. Unit eight is quite big. So we with the meet class will take, will be a longer class because we have to do that. And uh, we actually have three, including, uh, including today's uh, class. There are three classes that we have where we have these class activities. And uh, I will be grading you out of five marks. Okay, so you, if you are not present for any instance, then you will actually lose those marks, right? So those five marks actually becomes, you get zero out of those five. Like five into 315, so you get straight away zero and your percentage will go down. So all of you should be present, all of you should be writing those as a, in those class activities starting from today, the three weeks that we have. And... Uh, 24th, when I finish your syllabus, 24th, what I'm actually going to do is after I complete your syllabus, I'm going to give you a revision test on that day. Okay, so I'm telling you right away, by 23rd, you should be getting ready with your syllabus. Okay, start getting ready, go through it, and uh, go whatever doubts, queries you have, just clarify it. So 24th class is after I take the class, you will do a revision uh, test, and then we will have a discussion, a little more discussion. So 24th class will be into three parts. We have a class, you do uh, your assessments, then again, we will have a discussion. So by that time, we will get to know when your exams is happening and how it's going to happen, like the dates and everything. Okay, so this is where I just wanted to tell you. Okay, now with uh, let's go to the next part of today's class is where we I give you I uh, with regards to your feedback on the situation analysis that you all had done on communication. Now, despite my telling you repeatedly, there have been quite a lot of you who have not seen the marking criteria. I've been telling you these marking criteria. It's not that I have given you just on that day. I've given you earlier. I told you should be looking into it. And I said, please check on the marking criteria before you write your answer. I mean, you have something. You most of you, what you are doing is you are just writing straight away your answer where there is a cri criteria which says identify the problem and analyze the situation you need to say something about what the problem is you have to say you have to give a little explanation i'm not saying you all have not done like more everyone has not done some of you've done and you've got got those marks but you have to do that some of you just mentioned in one or two sentences one sentence where you have the marking criteria, there is a separate marks for that. So you lost, I gave you marks, but you did not get proper full marks, like the maximum marks that was given, because you needed to explain, because it doesn't seemingly identify, you need to analyze it. Should I have been careful with that? 
and you're writing your recommendations, recommendations with uh, some conclusion. Now, some of you did again give me recommendation and conclusion. Some of you just gave me the recommendation. Your conclusion. What is your final conclusion? You need to write it, right? Or some of you have just given a sentence which is called conclusion, which looks, but it it was that didn't make any sense to me. You have your conclusion is your conclusion. What did you think of it? Finally, what is your conclusion on this particular situation? So that needed to be done, right? And uh, of course, you had something on your uh, language thing was there. So, so most of you have done okay with there, with your language was fine. But some of you, your language was a little difficult to understand, right? So you have to be a little more careful once again. And please remember, final exams, you will there will be cross grading happening. It's not just me who's going to check. There's another faculty also who's going to check. And uh, it'll be difficult for you. Okay. It's not just me. So you have to be very, very careful with this. Right? And uh, where with the, your last uh, criteria that was presentation, because if you had done, if, you're, if you had given me, identified the situation and analyzed it properly, given me recommendation and conclusion, if everything was done, then the presentation marks, the maximum marks was given. If something was missing, you lost marks there. So this is how the grading was being done. Okay, and after the class, after we finish today's class, if there's anyone who further wants to have a discussion with me, you are most welcome to discuss with me. I can discuss with you. I can talk to you also in person and uh, tell you like uh, where you can improve upon. That we can always do that. So with this, we actually start today's class. Today's class uh, is on uh, um, the last part of communication. So I'll start my presentation. Now, af before, after I, uh, we, I'll let me complete uh, my discussion. And whatever doubts, queries you have, you make a note of it. And then I'll leave the floor open for you for your uh, question answers, whatever questions whatever you have. And then I'll talk a little on your class activity today. So let's let's actually start with uh, today's class. Okay, we will be starting today with uh, what we have is we will have uh, today is uh, the types of communication. Last class we were discussing about communication and importance of communication, the seven C's. So today we talk of we start our class with the types of communication. Now types of communication, if we broadly classify into three parts. One is according to the way we express ourselves. Second, based on the organizational structure. And third, with respect to the direction of communication. Now, uh, when we talk of the way we express, it could be a written, it could be verbal, it could be non-verbal. And you know, sometimes written is also considered as part of verbal. Why? Because you are also documenting. Sometimes it is written, comes under verbal. Usually we say something when we talk, right? But a written can also be uh, actually clubbed together. It can be said it's a type of verbal because it's been documented. You can actually read or you there's something. When you say, you can hear. It's there. Words are being said either through writing or through, uh, through, the, through your words. And non-verbal comes up is when we have our, uh, without saying anything, sign languages. Okay. Now, with, the, with respect to the formal structure, we are uh, organizational structure, we have formal and informal. With regards to the direction, it is downward, upward, and horizontal. So let's, we will discuss more of this uh, right now in details. Right. So when we talk according to the way of expression, right, expression, so, as I said, verbal communication, it also includes written communication. What is, because what is, when we say verbal communication, verbal communication is when we are using speech. Speech and sharing our information through usage of speech, usage of words. Now, that can be like words, speech can be sounds, it can be words. Now, when we talk of sound, we say it's verbal. When it's words, that is something that's written. So written. So it's that's why written communication 
also in is included in verbal communication that's what we say we say it different but it can be included so as we said it can be either uh, written or it can be right uh, where we talk of is uh, oral right oral is when we say verbal written is a written documentation now when we say the types of verbal communication that can happen at workplace it can be when we have meetings happening meetings discussions happen yesterday uh, we had a meeting and the crs were there so there was a meeting the discussions happening so that's verbal happening when you're presenting presentations happening presentation is what is it it's it's both written as well as oral document it's there and you're also explaining it when workshops happen workshops is training so in training what happens there is something uh, where you uh, the trainer actually talks discusses with you and also gives you something to write something to do so it's verbal again conversation when we have a talk discuss with each other conversation on it could be uh, something official conversation happening it could be unofficial also when we discuss amongst colleagues when we discuss when we talk with our superiors when we talk with our subordinates so that's conversation and the other that comes up is emails where we do not talk but we have complete words and that's documented when we send mails to each other so that's written now what happens is uh no before i actually go to the uh, next thing let's let's talk about uh, the non verbal communication the non verbal communication is where we do not have any words any spoken or written words then how is the message being communicated through our body language through our facial gestures body language comes into play our facial gestures are eyes hands the way we stand or how do we sit it gets we get to know about it you know if you try to remember i had told you in class something that when whenever i asked you questions you all were saying yes ma'am and what did i say that it's uh, we say yes but our eyes betray us because i tell the correct information when we say something we can say a lot of things we are not interested we say yes oh, oh okay but we don't tell but our body language will betray us they will tell whether we really understood whether we are bored whether we don't like a person whether we like so it tells us so that's uh, that's why non verbal communication is very very powerful it's more powerful than your verbal communication now when we actually see this right uh like how do we with with regards to communication like a uh, how does inform when information flows right so in which situation do we have the condition where the information reaches is more effective and which is a condition where the information is less effective now as we see here when you have anything written a written communication the information is lowest because what's happening when you write something and send it sometimes what happens we are not able to express properly or uh, things can be misinterpreted because we are not talking we are writing someone is reading it depends on how we perceive that situation how we look into that situation and we can have our own way of perceiving it or our own way of interpretation and there that's where the problem comes up where we may not be able to communicate properly the information that can happen then comes up a little better position if you say is uh, where we personally address written communication the impersonal written communication is a formal you know very formally you write something the, so it's it's a very well how do you have you have all those the mails coming to you you have those notices which comes to you which is general for the college when you get all those emails you see notices on the websites on the artist on the college websites you see these are impersonal but if a personal mail is being addressed to you that in that case the information passes on a little better it's received in a much uh, the degree of receiving of the message is higher as compared to in person that happens the next above that what we have is is the spoken spoken communication 
electrically communicated. Spoken communication, electronically communicated is when we spoke, when we talk over the mobile, when we talk, or when we are on like a, we are talking it, talking on the mobiles. We don't see each other, but we are talking. So there you are able to actually explain that if someone is upset with the way what you're saying, then you can say, no, actually what I meant to say is, so talking is much better than writing. You're able to express. You're able to understand what the others are feeling. But here what happens in case of when we speak on the mobile, we do not actually see someone's face. We just have to understand from the tone. So, And the best form when we say is, uh, that's the highest, see this, is when we have a face-to-face -face communication where what happens? We are seeing each other we are looking into the facial expression not just the verbal expression verbally what you're saying but your facial expression your body language and you can see it so it could be when you're meeting in in person also when you are sitting across the uh, having a chat like uh, say online the virtual uh, communication that happens where you are you are in having a web conference video conferencing happening and uh, people see each other and that's also uh, it's easier when you have a one-to-one -one conference uh, uh, interaction happening. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so the, now when and that's what I said. Like uh, I just spoke about it. Like face-to-face uh, -face has the highest uh, the information richness. Why? Because you can actually interact. You can have feedback, instant feedbacks coming up. There is verbal and non-verbal signs happening. Video conferences happens, right? So what happens? You can actually talk. And what? that's also something, uh, travel cost that gets minimized. The meeting time, that also is minimized. You don't have to travel somewhere and sit and discuss. You're sitting there and discuss. So it's, it's much easier. And uh, it's uh, you can interact with your workers also because you can have informal talks also. It's much better. And uh, with regards to when we say, as I said about the electronic transfer, that's where we're talking of mobiles and uh, telephone conversations. Like we we can actually get to know about, uh, like with, through the tone of the voice, whether someone is happy, someone is understood, someone is not happy, right? So that's how it comes up. And of course, there are feedback comes up, but we do not have any visual uh, signs what the person is thinking like how is the person reacting we just think feedback is given without seeing the actual person we get the feedback so okay and uh, with regards as i said with the personal uh, personal communication written communication yes uh, because it is directed to a specific person so what happens the person will actually read it because it's addressed to you not to anyone else it's not a common mail it's not a very a uh, formal uh, mail which has come to everyone. So you will get feedback, but not instant because you, the person has to read the mail and you do not know when the person is going to read the mail. Like when you're talking, you person is listening to you immediately. But uh, when you write, it's difficult. And of course, when you have some uh, complex messages are there, so then what happens? Like uh, you, there's a request that comes up. Could you please actually uh, follow up on this? And then, so there it becomes a little faster. But otherwise, it's a common meals. People take a long time. And when you have a real in, in personal, uh, formal communication that comes up, what happens? Uh, feedback is very less because it's a general thing. Why would, like if it's addressed to the entire uh, say community, why should I, why would I want to actually address that? Why do I want to give feedback? There are others, the attitude is this, or there are others to give. It's not addressed to me directly. So that's where it comes up. So the information, the quality of information is very low. Okay. The second type of communication, as we said, and uh, that's according to organizational structure. And there are first type that we have is a formal communication. Formal communication, what happens? It's where you see, this is a, where a meeting is happening. It's very much structured and people are communicating, discussing what they have to say and what is happening up here. It's not anyone cannot just dictate, right? 
there's an authority, the line of authority has to be maintained. That's very much formal. That's top bosses are actually going to address that meeting, tell you what's happening, and just tell you it's it's uh, where we have the corporate meetings, we have conferences, these are all formal, which is documented, very much official. Official, and we just know we need to sit in our own places. We cannot go and sit anywhere, and uh, uh, we cannot just say anything. There's a protocol. But just the opposite to it, when we have the informal, informal conversation that we have, is you see, people are uh, standing up here, are uh, having a uh, having food and over a cup of coffee, and they're discussing. Okay, they're not in their office, so it's done quite. It's very casual. It's, uh, it's not uh, formal, it's very casual and it's a face-to-face -face discussion happens, casual talks happening, like verbal, verbal gel, you're uh, talking, over, uh, talking as well as using your verbal gestures. Why is it being done? To build relationships and it can happen across departments. It can happen across levels of the, man of the organization, top level, talking with uh, the low level management or some employees or someone it's across departments or discussions happens on a camera on a uh, informal level how because friends that's where we talk of friendships relationships here we talk of friendships we discuss yeah we just have we talk about a family we talk of the daily life so a lot of things happening we discuss and we share our ideas opinions so that's how it goes about uh Right, and the third type that we have is communication according to direction of communication. So communication can be downward. This is downward where basically it's the top boss who gives instruction, who comes to the middle level, and then it goes to the lower level, right, from the top to the lower level. The second type is where we talk of the upward communication, that is from below to up. That is where we have, it's more of info, where we have feedback session happening. It's the low level employees, the other ones who are actually interacting with the customers, with the external stakeholders. They are the ones who are facing the reality. The instruction that has come from the top it's been implemented by the employees. They are facing whatever problems they face, whatever feedback they have, good or bad. It comes to them. They report back to their superiors and which ultimately goes to the top level management. And based on the feedback that is sent up here, they make the decision, re revise the decision or uh, come up with something new and that has been again implemented. So it's a cyclical process. Top down and bottom up. So these are this is the two these are the two types that we have as for the direction of communication. There's a third type which we have that is horizontal. Horizontal is at the same level. Same level across departments, across individuals, but at the same level. See it could be all the managers, managers of different departments exchange of ideas it could be formal exchange of ideas it could be informal exchange of ideas also right but they are all at the same level or the top level management they're different heading different departments different work they are at the same level. discussion amongst different individuals or departmental heads different departments but the designation is the same they are at the same level okay so these are the three different types of communicate uh, communication that we have as for the direction. Now, the last thing that comes for today is the barriers to effective communication. Okay, so let me actually start discussing with you. The first that comes up is perception and attribution biases. Perception comes from the word perceive, how you look into the situation. Okay, different people look into the situ look into one particular incident in different ways. Okay, they look into it different ways and automatically they form their own opinion and which may be contradictory with what the others are thinking. Something is happening, a pro some work is being given, some information is passed. And there, what happens? The person who's giving that information is looking into that situation in a different way. 
and we receive we are looking into a different way it can happen and that's where the problem comes up okay and so so we it can affect it can affect communication second comes up is conflicting assumptions okay conflicting assumptions is where we like we do not actually we do not actually listen to what has been said we do not hear we hear what we want to hear we don't hear exactly what has been told whatever we are thinking we hear only what we want to and we come to our own conclusions and which is an incorrect conclusion because we have not heard fully say for instance if it's a, okay the we will have exams so what you, what are we what are you thinking you've heard as for yesterday's meeting when it said exams will be held so if you see okay exams held and so you think but have you heard how the exams is going to be held that is or when it's going to be held you have not heard that so you're coming to your conclusion you're saying like well so we will not get any time to study what what will happen have you heard the full information you not heard you just heard what you want to hear you wanted to know that the exam is happening or not so that is where the conflict in assumptions like you hear what you want to hear without hearing the full information third comes up is inadequate information inadequate um, the word inadequate means incomplete or incorrect information when we do not give when we have want to share information with others be it our subordinates be it our colleagues who are at the same level be it to our bosses if we do not give the correct information if give if we give an incorrect information what happens decision making becomes difficult the other person does not get the full information and there can be problem the problem comes up where the organization is concerned next comes up is where we talk of semantics semantics is the meaning of semantics is how to use the words in the right way right sense okay you uh, you have to use it so it's the systematic uh, it, it talks about the study of the meaning of words that has the words or language as we say language can be a big barrier you know language can be a barrier because if we are not able to communicate the idea is good but if we are not able to communicate properly if you are not able to do it then what happens in our last class we also spoke about it encoding and decoding so if you are not able to uh, actually convey that message properly the usage of the right language the person who is receiving that uh, information is not able to interpret correctly and that's where uh, the chaos comes up and so the feedback that comes up is not correct because a person has not been able to understand what you're trying to say so that's where the another problem okay emotional blocks emotional blocks is where we talk of iq okay so iq what happens uh when we uh, we are talking of iq or emotional we the ease how comfortable are we how comfortable are we when we are communicating how easy are we are we, are we able to communicate easily or are we finding it difficult to communicate that that's where it happens someone who is quite a seasoned person in the in the car in the charms means who's experienced what happens person is able to communicate in a more mature way as compared to a newcomer who's actually undergoing that experience for the first time so what happens finding it difficult to communicate the difficulty comes so you're not able, you know you're it's not that you don't know the knowledge knowledge is there hundred percent but you don't feel comfortable talking in front of everyone so that's where the blockage comes okay next comes up is non verbal communication barriers now non verbal communication barriers when we say it's basically our body language our postures our facial expressions right so it's and that talks a lot as i said non verbal communication speaks a lot on the face we say yes we understood yes we know what you are saying yes we support you we like this do you really like this or are you really supporting so what happens is you know when your bosses are there or when you actually talk what you need to actually see is not just what the person is telling you the reply but also their facial expression their body language their eyes is it also supporting what they are saying if the body language says something different that's the answer actual answer 
not what they are saying. So that can be also a problem, right? So it can be a, it can create problem if you say you are saying something, your body language says something. So that uh, it's contradicted. Okay. Next comes up is your cultural barrier. A cultural barrier. Different people coming from different cultural background have different values, different uh, views, different opinions. So what is right for one may not be right for the others. The way of dressing, you know, the uh, with with dress, I'll just tell you. Now what happens is if you actually see white white dress, like. In uh, in Christianity, like uh, when uh, at the time of marriage, the crew, the bride wears a white dress. Okay, that's the tradition. That's what the, uh, the culture says. So, but if you look into someone like uh, in Hinduism, someone who's wearing white, it is said that if a lady person whose uh, husband passes away, then they are expected to wear something white. So that's contradicted. One talks of marriage, one talks of death. That's entirely different thing. But it's your culture, your religion that tells you the way you dress, the way you talk. What is like when here in Bhutan, what happens when I have when I have been interacting with students? I see when students, whenever I see you all, what happens? You all usually would uh, not uh, reply back, right? You are more quiet. Your mother, you talk. You would would not talk uh, when the teacher asks. You would not uh, say, shout back at the teacher because you said. And when I discussed this, and I was being told that it's part of our culture that we do we do not speak up. We prefer to be quiet. There are respect for the teachers. But what happens for us, like you're in the Western world, like we do tell, like it's not we are insulting teachers, but it is expected that we will speak. We will tell. If we agree to it, we tell it. If we do not agree to it, we also tell it. Why? So it is expected. And more in the Western world, it is expected. If you keep quiet, it is not taken as a pos positive sign. So again, it's again you, the culture, your uh, upbringing, the society, how it's been, how you're being brought up. So there's nothing called right or wrong, but this difference is there, and one has to understand and respect this difference in an organization. Okay. Next comes up is uh, inadequate communication media. Okay. Now inadequate when we use outdated technology then it becomes problem outdated problem is what happens today what happens how many people will actually read the emails very few how many people actually will like today what if you put up a notice people don't see it so much but if you are actually sending a text on a whatsapp people are seeing it so today what happens people would prefer to actually olden days people would write mails and send those written mails which was posted and then came up emails and today what happens today people go for a video conferencing today we, people are on the whatsapp and just uh, having a video chat or sending messages that's faster faster messages on your we on a whatsapp people don't check emails but they check their whatsapp so it's or on the messenger so that's uh, what the thing is so you need to use the right kind of technology to communicate and the last that comes up is the technological barriers technological barriers this comes from uh, the, uh, the previous one where so what happens new technology is coming up if we do not upgrade ourselves if we are not comfortable with the new technology then it becomes problem why because the person with whom we are communicating is already is having the latest technology knows about it is using it we are not then it becomes a barrier how do we communicate we are using an outdated technology person with whom we are communicating discussing and decided to work is using the latest technology and uh, we have not decided we have decided we will not upgrade ourselves we are so so conservative and because change is coming up we are not willing to go for that change so that can also become a big problem. So technological changes, we also have to upgrade ourselves.
okay so this is what we have uh, in unit 7 that's where we complete so uh, wait um yeah that's all that we have uh, with from my side these are things that i have now i open the floor for all of you like uh, whatever doubts queries you have you can uh, ask me any questions if you have any questions anyone has any questions on what has been taught do you have any questions i don't see anyone saying anything no ma'am. No ma'am. Understood. No ma'am. All clear. Hundred percent. Okay. And technology here. Can you ask me one more? Which one? Technological barrier. Technological barrier. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Technological barrier is the the latest technology. Technology is coming up every day. You see, even with mobiles. right you see new tech new mobiles coming up with new technology new uh, there are new uh, the settings coming up new uh, benefits coming up so where today what is happening we do not have to sit in front of the computer and actually do the work through your mobile you can mobile is acting as your computer also so technology is improving new things are coming up right and uh, today we, we have robots actually been doing the work also in the organizations so we have to like robotics artificial intelligence as we say so it's coming up these are new things that's coming up uh we have to get ourselves also trained we have to upgrade ourselves if we do not do that then the problem that comes up is we are not able to communicate we are not able to keep at pace with the others the others are actually growing up developing and we are not able to do that that's that's what it is technological barrier can be a very big barrier because someone who is there are people you know elderly people when you, when i still go home when i go home i see elderly people they're using their mobile which does not the olden days like simple mobile there's you can it does not have a screen touch you there's you cannot go for a, it is not android no whatsapp no. so what happens i said you why why don't why can why will you not use it no we don't want it what's the use of it we just want to receive uh, receive and uh, calls and calls on when we have to dial, call someone we call that's all we don't need it right so this is where the problem comes up because what happens sometimes like say for instance i'm staying here in bhutan my family is in india right so making an international call is costlier as compared to talking to them on whatsapp it helps when we are that's what we do when we have whatsapp we just just can talk we can use a wifi and just talk or the if we are not, wherever we do not have to have wifi the mobile data but that's still cheaper as compared to when we talk with an international call but what will you do say for instance my mom she does not have uh, her mobile is which does not have uh, the android it's not an android phone normal nokia phone she has she just makes calls and receives uh, calls she said no i'm not going to do it so for her if when i talk i make an international call if with respect to my sisters and brothers what happens i can talk to them on whatsapp i just text them or i just call so that's much easier so that's that's the barrier that comes up and this is just when we talk of family but if you are talking about in the corporate world and if you are if you are not a tech savvy if you are not develop uh, developed yourself technologically if you are not equipped with the latest gadget then it becomes difficult to communicate and it takes long time and so the barrier comes in is it okay so no yes ma'am okay anyone else has any questions Ma'am. Yes. Uh, my doubt is on non-formal communication. Okay. Uh, uh, what? In the in the slide we saw a picture where a group of people holding snacks and talking yes. to each other. Yes. Right. 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 Ma'am, my question is whether non-formal communication is applicable in meetings or presentations or works related to our job or the company. Okay. Ah. Uh, 
that's a good question kinsan now non formal like when we have this informal communication happening you know that happens outside the meeting outside the presentation but they can discuss about the meeting they talk and it's not at the same like you even your bosses can discuss with you and it's informal it's not recorded nobody and there's no protocol up there you can talk you can discuss and then when you come for the meeting that's when you actually talk about in a more formal way you can discuss it but it's not recorded formal discussion it's recorded informal discussion it's not and informal means that's when you know even you can if you are talking with your bosses if you talk with someone senior you can also give your uh, opinion in a very casual manner when you are in a meeting when a presentation goes on you can just start talking that's against the protocol so that's the difference is it okay kinzang okay ma'am okay anyone else has any questions is there any question from anyone else what ma'am a yes. difference between informal and formal meeting ma'am yeah information information like yeah uh, information uh, i i didn't get you ma'am uh, can you please uh, tell me once more uh there is three types of uh, communication no ma'am uh, one yes. is informal and one is formal yes i'm having doubt on both madam you having doubt on both okay formal communication yes, when we talk, yeah formal communication is when we are in a meeting when presentation is happening when a formal discussion is happening where you know you have a separate meeting room separate a presentation room and you're sitting there who's talking not we as common employees someone who's presenter is speaking or in a meeting the boss is speaking or our supervisor is talking the ones who are telling us uh, telling us information and these are being noted down by their personal assistant or the secretary someone is noting down taking down the minutes of the meeting okay yesterday like when when we had the meeting uh, doji was there you must if you had seen it like uh, there was there were uh, some of the uh, members from the ad who were minuting the min taking the minutes of that meeting so minutes have been recorded what has been said what is the discussion everything has been recorded informal discussion happens outside that room and formal discussion nobody will sit with a cup of coffee and discussing you are sitting with a cup of coffee with your boss and talking in a formal discussion it doesn't happen informally means outside that room where everyone is at the same level people are having cup of coffee and over a cup of coffee you discuss you can still express your opinion ideas it's not been documented you can say something which you are not able to say in the meeting in the meeting and uh, that's how it's more of building up a relationship up there without any barrier of hierarchy that's what happens you it's more an informal talk informal conversation that happens nothing is been recorded ma'am is it clear yes ma'am thank you okay uh any other questions from anyone does any of any of you have any other question yes no no ma'am okay if you do not have any questions now what i'll actually tell you is about your class activity that you have today now it's already posted in your uh, the classroom page so after this uh, you will just uh, go to your classroom page you will see the questions that is there there are two questions which is there think very carefully and then write your answers i want you to write your answers in your own words and you can refer if you are referring you have to give me a reference the source okay and uh, this is mark out of 5 and you're not going to copy from each other you know because uh, some of you do have a tendency also to wait for your friends or ask your friends and then your friends write then you do it but uh, as we discussed yesterday's meeting and where your cr was there and where it was also clearly said that we as faculty members we not just faculty members the college also because they look into it what has been done everyone is able to see who has submitted the work first the person who submits late later 
after and then you have uh, you had copied from your friends and getting it you are going to lose marks there so write in your own words because in your final exams you will not have your friends writing for you or your friends helping you if that happens you know what's going to happen your semester is going to get cancelled start making it a habit of writing by yourself read it write it by yourself and submit so it's marked out of 5 and we next week we will have class so that's the last unit that we start it's a big chapter so next week's class will be quite big on the gv it will be a big class you will have again assessment which is again marked out of five marks i'll give you and 24th i will finish the syllabus and 24th after i finish the syllabus i'll give you a practice test that's also going to be graded so this is all going to be part of your class participation. So those of you who have a, your class participation, little, your total CA is a little less. This is one way where you can improve upon your class, your CA marks. Uh, is it clear with all of you? Uh, clear yes, with all of you? So I want everyone to be present on all these days. And anyone missing today's club who's not doing their work today or the other two days will just be marked absent. I will not give you a second chance. Either you, you have to do it today. Okay. Uh, if there's no other thing, so that's where we stop today, right? And I'll see you in class next week. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Thank you madam. Yeah. Okay. See you. See you. You can go back to your class classwork classwork page and start. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.